What is the strongest animal in the world? David Attenborough has been asking this question for 150 odd years. At least, I think that's what he was doing with all those documentaries. Well, today, I'm going to do his job for him. And I will do it using the power of Zoo Tycoon 2. Gladiatorial battles. Some of us might claim not to like them, but deep down, we all enjoy watching animals fight each other to the death. <laughs> Oh god. It's a real shame this wonderful spectator sport isn't around to this day. But through the zoo simulation game Zoo Tycoon 2, I might just be able to create my very own gladiator fighting ring. With this in mind, I set about making my arena. I first put some fenced areas down where I would keep my animals. And then, the main event. A battleground like no other. It needed to be relatively small so that animals couldn't run or hide from each other while fighting. But it also needed to include a range of terrains so no particular species has an advantage over others. Taking all this into account, I eventually came up with this majestic amphitheatre. And I christened it the Bone Dome. Because of all the bones that will fill the bottom of it after the animals have died. Oh god, this is horrible. And now the stage was set and the crowds of bloodthirsty spectators were beginning to arrive it was time to introduce the competitors. Here's how it would work. Competing today would be the four main kingdoms of the animal world. These being mammals, birds, reptiles slash amphibians, and fish. I know what you're thinking, what about insects? But who cares about insects? I don't care about insects. Each kingdom would be represented by four champions, and I'd managed to gather the most fearsome group of animals the world has to offer. Without further ado, here are the lineups. Lining up first for the mammals and coming all the way from the plains of Africa, the Black Rhino. Adorned with a huge sharp horn on its face, the Black Rhino's thick hide and deceptive speed will make it a tough opponent. It is critically endangered, so I'm not too sure whether I should be letting it fight to the death, but moving on. The Bengal Tiger, a ferocious hunter with fine-tuned sensors and razor-sharp claws. The Polar Bear, strong as an ox and powerful as a... A, a bear. And finally, the aardvark. People may underestimate the aardvark's strength, but they can eat like thousands of ants in a day or something, so they must be pretty strong. Lining up for the birds, it may not be scary, but it sure is pretty. It's the peacock. Then we have a bird that likes to kick people, and, and also stick its head in the sand. It's the ostrich. Coming in third is a bird that can't fly or walk very well, but it's still my favourite, it's the penguin! And finally for the birds we have a bird that's only strength is its ability to stand on one leg. It's the flamingo! Now, the first challenger for the fish. It's the biggest of them all, but I'm just being informed that apparently it's completely harmless. It's the whale shark! Second for the fish, it's one of the side characters from Finding Nemo, the hammerhead shark! The hammerhead boasts rows of knife-like teeth, and it's probably the fish's most promising competitor. Considering that next up is the manta ray! It likes to frolic about and splash, and it's pretty useless apart from that. And then finally, we have the swordfish. It's got a big pointy nose, Oh, it might stab you, watch out! And for the reptiles and amphibians, first we have the crocodile. Don't get in the way of this fellow as jaws because he'll bite you. Then we have the Komodo dragon. Komodo dragons have a poisonous, um, uh, uh, they're, they're poisonous. Next up is the most dangerous of them all, the Galapagos giant tortoise. The clue's in the name, it's a big tortoise. And then finally our last competitor is of course the T-Rex. You might think it's a bit unfair that reptiles and amphibians have managed to bring back a dinosaur from literal extinction, but I don't make the rules. Anyway, we're going to be keeping him in his box for now because he's a bit too dangerous to be kept in by this white picket fence. Now I've got all the animals rounded up, each of the champions would be randomly seeded into a knockout tournament, starting with the round of 16. With that said, the crowd gathered for the first match with eager anticipation, and they would not be disappointed, as the first round was Aardvark versus Peacock. The judges took their seats, the referee's whistle blew, and the tournament began. The battle was immediately extremely heated, as both Aardvark and Peacock took their favoured positions. The Peacock decided to head for the trees, but in an instant, the Aardvark had followed suit. To get away from the Aardvark, the Peacock used its climbing abilities to perch itself on one of the tree's branches. Deterred by this, the Aardvark decided to change tactics and go for a swim. In return, the Peacock turned itself upside down. Uh, wait! 
These two aren't fighting, they're just enjoying themselves. This was a real problem. I'd somehow set up a gladiator battle in which neither competitor wanted to attack each other, but I had to decide a victor somehow. This was only the first match of the whole competition. We couldn't carry on without a winner. It would seem I would have to refer to my ever-reliable panel of judges. And after a bit of thinking, they gave the aardvark the victory as the peacock had spent the majority of the match the wrong way up. With such a stinker of a first match, I knew the next match would have to be much more exciting, or the crowds of bloodthirsty spectators would not be happy. As such, I decided to choose two of the most fearsome animals I had. The Ostrich versus the Komodo Dragon. The battle began, and the Ostrich started by trying to intimidate the Komodo Dragon into a retreat, but he stood his ground, and after turning tail to run, the Komodo Dragon began to chase the Ostrich across the arena. Although the Ostrich may have been faster, the Komodo Dragon had superior stamina, and eventually he caught up to the big bird, and dealt the lethal blow. Match 2 went to the reptiles. Whilst this battle was going on, it seems there was some trouble elsewhere in the zoo. The white picket fence I'd used to contain the animals whilst they weren't competing wasn't working too well, as the black rhino had broken through them and attempted to make his escape. As punishment, I decided to throw him into the next battle, and he would be facing a very tough opponent. The Hammerhead Shark. The match started, but due to the rhino being on land, and the hammerhead shark being in the water, nothing much was really happening. The rhino did attempt to get into the water, but he got stuck on his way in. To counter this, the rhino began to walk away from the water to give himself a run-up. Or so I thought, but it turns out he was actually just making another escape. Because he left the arena, the rhino was disqualified, and the hammerhead shark went through. At this point, the polar bear had broken out of his enclosure as well, so it was his turn next, and he would be facing the crocodile. This should be a feisty match. The crocodile began by opening its mouth wide to show off its razor-sharp teeth. The polar bear wasn't afraid though, as it stood up to show its towering height. Suddenly, the crocodile lunged towards the polar bear, but the bear was ready, and he threw a few punches in return. It wasn't enough though, and the bear had no option but to try and retreat. The crocodile followed him, and then they... Uh, oh, what? They made friends? What is this? The crocodile and the polar bear had gained a newfound respect for each other, and rather than fighting, they decided to watch the sunset together. The judges determined this a loss on the crocodile's side, as the bear had at least thrown a few punches, and unfortunately, the next rounds proceeded to be uneventful as well. The Bengal tiger killed the flamingo before it even had a chance. The penguin and the manta ray didn't even touch each other, but the penguin was disqualified for using a secret jujitsu invisibility technique that wasn't allowed. The T-Rex versus the swordfish should have been an entertaining match, but the swordfish decided instead to frolic about whilst the T-Rex broke the arena wall down and escaped into the public to wreak havoc. As a result, it was disqualified, and the final match of the round of 16 entailed the tortoise versus the whale shark, with the giant tortoise taking the win as she had bribed the judges with lots of money. Where she got the money from, I really don't know. As the quarterfinals rolled around, I could tell I was losing the supporters. This wasn't nearly as high octane as I'd promised, but don't worry, because I had a plan. Rather than fighting one on one, the animals would now have to fight 10 versus 10, and the first battle was between the Aardvarks and the Komodo Dragon. For some reason, as soon as the fight started, both species headed directly towards the water. This was a bad move for the Aardvarks, as the Komodo dragons surrounded the pool and picked them off one by one as they tried to get out. What followed was an absolute bloodbath, and the Aardvarks were defeated aside from one who managed to duck and weave his way between the lizards and escape out of the broken wall the T-Rex had made earlier. The Komodo dragons progressed to the semi-finals. Next up was Polar Bears vs Hammerhead Sharks. A tricky match for the Polar Bears as they would have to enter the water as well, a place where the Hammerhead Sharks were much more comfortable. However, the Polar Bears were too powerful and instead of panicking, they began to do some trick shots, which caused a commotion on the water's surface and scared the sharks onto land. With the sharks beached, the Polar Bears surrounded them and prevented them from getting back into the water. As such, the Polar Bears moved on to the semi-finals. Now it was time for Manta Rays vs Bengal Tigers, and inspired by the Polar Bears, the Tigers attempted to employ a similar tactic. However, the Manta Rays had a tactic of their own, and they began to jump above the water to create huge splashes. This constant splashing drove the Tigers away, but it didn't deal any damage. 
What it did do was frustrate the Tigers, and after a little while they began to fight between themselves. Although this technically meant that the Tigers had suffered more casualties than the Manta Rays, it also technically meant that they had more kills, and the Bloodthirsty Judges decided to give them the win. Finally, it was Tortoises versus Swordfish, but due to the increased number of animals on each team, the Swordfishes found themselves accidentally skewering each other on their long pointy noses. As a result, the Tortoises took the victory, and it was on to the semi-finals. The semi-finals would operate in a similar way to the quarters, only this time, the animals would have to line up opposite to each other to encourage head-to-head -head combat. As such, both Komodo Dragons and Polar Bears formed their ranks and prepared to charge towards each other. But as the match started, both species yet again went straight towards the water. I don't understand, why did they do this? The Komodo Dragons clearly hadn't paid attention to the Polar Bears previous match, and the bears began to perform trick shots in the water yet again. This forced the battle back onto land where the bears kept up the offensive and won the fight. The second semi-final was Tortoises vs Bengal Tigers. I think we can guess which way this one's going. As seems to be customary at this point, the Tigers all began by heading towards the water for a quick bath. And once they'd finished, they began to create carnage. Despite their hard outer shells, the Tortoises were no match for the Tigers. And before long, the Tigers were victorious. Both finalists had now been confirmed. The Polar Bear, the Arctic's strongest predator, versus the Bengal Tiger, master of the hunt and king of the jungle. At last I had a showdown to get the crowds excited. And that wasn't all, because this time, there would be 50 animals on each team. To accommodate for this, I removed everything from the arena. Now, it was an open battlefield. A true test of strength. With that, the referee's whistle sounded, and the final began. At first, it was very difficult to tell which side had the upper hand. The Tigers seemed to take a liking to this one big rock in the corner of the field, but to their dismay, a polar bear had managed to reach it first. It seemed to be a stalemate. That is, until one brave Bengal tiger decided to sit on the rock as well. This angered the polar bears so much that an all-out brawl commenced. A blur of polar bears and tigers. It was hard to keep track. At one point, it seemed the tigers were winning, as the polar bears lay strewn across the floor. But as it turns out, they were merely playing dead to fool the tigers into a false sense of security, which allowed the bears to counter. By the time the tigers had realised it, it was too late. And it brings me great happiness to announce that the polar bear is officially the strongest animal in the world! But no. <laughs> It was all a ruse. There is in fact a creature that is far, far stronger than the polar bear. Far stronger than any animal, in fact. So strong that they keep animals in cages just for their own amusement. That's right, everyone. Zoo keepers. Cower in fear at the sight of the zoo keepers. You can't handle the power of the zoo keepers. Soon they will take over the world and the whole planet will be a zoo. Let's go zoo keepers. Let's go, zookeeper! This video was sponsored by Chester Zoo.